10 settings you should change on your Pico 4 when you get it. This includes hand tracking and loads of other things that are just going to make your life so much easier. So to activate hand tracking, what you want to do is go into your quick settings, then go to settings, then go down to general, and then scroll all the way down to about. And you want to click on about, and then scroll all the way down to software version. And you want to tap this, I think, let's see how many times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to do it seven times consecutively, as fast as you can. And then developer shows up. And you want to go into developer. And what you then need to do is, well, you can see USB bug, um, USB-C connection, charge the, the device, file transfer. You can pick one of those. Play boundary, yes. And hand tracking. Now, hand tracking will be switched on automatically when controllers are away from your hands or cannot be detected. The system will not store your hand tracking data. This feature only applies to apps adapted to hand tracking. And it'll go through the different ways of doing it. So the first thing you wanna do is to activate the hand tracking itself. And to do that is to put the controllers down nice and safely. Then to actually activate the hand tracking, you want to make a fist and then open your hand and then make another fist and open your hand and do it quickly. So, there we go. Then another thing what you might want to be able to do is close and open your menu. So to get rid of all this in front of you, to do that you want to close your fist and then open it out and hold it there. Excellent. To bring it back, you do exactly the same thing. And then it brings it back. Now, say you want to move this menu when you move over here. What you want to do is hold out your hand as far as you can, but hold it fully out. So like this. There we go. And to move it back, we'll do the same again. And that's it. Then, depending on your dominant hand, to be able to scroll, what you want to do is make a fist with your thumbs up. Get to the circly bit that shows up and then pinch your thumb and scroll. Now, to activate a button, what you want to do, say top list. And we want to just click. And there we go. So we have this now shown up. So if we want to scroll across, again, we make a thumbs up and scroll across. And to scroll down, we do the same again. And then to select one of them, we pinch our thumb and forefinger together. And to close it, we do the same. And that's it. Those are the four gestures that you can do with hand tracking. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to quick settings. And then you'll see all these buttons at the bottom. And there's one that you definitely need to add. And if you go to settings and you go to general, then you go to shortcuts, which is what that bar is. And you'll notice that you've got your Bluetooth, your free up space and your IPD adjustment. But really, you need to add this. It makes life so much easier when you're wanting to shut down or restart your machine. You then just go back to your quick settings and you'll see it right there. And if you tap it. You'll be able to power it off, restart it, or you can cancel. So we, we don't want to restart it yet. The next thing, and it's a small one, but if you go to your controllers, I don't know whether you've defaulted to left or right. I defaulted straight away to left. Works out I am left-handed. But if you're right-handed, what you want to do is click right, and then you're good to go. I'm, I'm switching it back, okay. Don't judge me. The next big one, though, is in lab. And you want to go to these and you want to put quick see-through mode on. Which, to activate, you, instead of tapping this side, you wanted to actually tap underneath. And you just tap twice. And there we are. And then you tap again. And we're back in. 
Then you've noticed Nancy Hertz refresh mode. It is not on by standard. So you want to toggle that on. Now that's going to end the recording and switch my sh machine off and restart it. So I'll do that last. The next one is changing your virtual environment. You'll notice I'm in a bit more of a relaxing themed place than the space one that we were originally in, which scares me. And you want to go to virtual environment and you can tick between the, what, the different ones of them. Cyber room is an interesting one. Um, I don't know if anyone's played that game, but the next one is you can change power management um, to battery saver, which it'll tell you battery saver mode will minimize battery consumption by lowering, lowering the display quality. I haven't picked that one, but it will restart your device. I, I'm not going to use that, but it's one for an option. Back to general. And if you go to screencasting and recordings, now if you're going to be using this a lot, you might want to play around in here because at the moment it says screencast, receive screencast from external devices and it's always going to ask you. And it's the same with screencast to external devices. So either way, it's always going to ask you. So you can always allow and always allow. It will also, by default, not include microphone audio. So, you can tick that one on as well. And that's going to start record. I'm going to tick that one off because that might confuse things. But if you're wanting to record right from the off and you're wanting to do it all from your headset, I think you need that one on. Another good one in general is control vibration. And it will be set to around here. I like it all the way up there. If you go into display, you can change the brightness here. I mean, you can do it in your quick settings, but there is another one, which is eye protection, which sort of gives it a a nice, like, calming look to it. You don't have to use it, but, you know, if you have any issues with your eyes, might be one that you want to try out. Anyway, if this video was at all helpful to you, consider hitting that like button. Add any questions about the Pico 4 in the comments down below. And in this next video, we're going to take a look at the fitness app that goes with it and everything you need to set it up and what advantages there are to actually have it running. It suggests the games and such that can help you. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Goodbye.